One of my most anticipated retro gaming products of the year just showed up, the Terra Onion Super HD System 3 Pro. Not to be confused with the previous model that was not a Pro. This one, we have some cool stuff going on with it. It lists one of them right there, Super Graphics built in. So those, what is it, five Super Graphics games? We could play them on original hardware without having a Super Graphics. I thought that was pretty sweet. So here it is. I've already got my micro SD card ready for this thing. Gonna be testing it out, sharing some initial thoughts and impressions with you guys. Little reviewy review action here. The ultimate add-on to get the best from your PC engine. Uh, easy to use menu supporting CD and Hue card images. The one thing is, it does have that uh, cover art view as well, which I did download the uh, database for that. So we'll check that out. Built-in system cards for the CD-ROM, Super CD-ROM, and Arcade CD-ROM. Play any CD game without having to have the card plugged in. Uh, stores each game backup RAM to microSD, allowing infinite game saves. No, no need for additional uh, storage accessories. You know, there are some out there that you would use to save games, but you don't need that. You don't need that with this. Instantaneous Hue card loads using onboard RAM memory. Faster loading times than actual CD hardware. Sweet. One of the biggest things that I was looking forward to was this has HDMI built into it. 480p, 720p. We also have that AV multi-out for RGB, which is the uh, Genesis Model 2 style. So you can use like the Rad 2X, uh, HD retrovision cables, that kind of thing. Micro USB for developer port access. Uh, supposedly that'll be something in the future people can utilize. Uh, MD Fourier balanced audio. A physical switch on the back for in-game trigger, but you can also use a combination on the controller for that. So there's, you know, everything if you want to really like look at it. We're going to go ahead and open this thing up. Now the original model, I, I did have some initial mixed emotions with it. Like my first one that I had, I had to get modded because it had some issues and then it still wasn't 100%, but I still like the device. I wound up getting rid of that one and buying a new revision and didn't have any issues with that. Absolutely loved it. But yeah, hopefully th those initial woes, um, I think this company, they've gotten a lot better. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking this thing out. And I'm pretty sure, <laughs> here it is, looking like the, uh, the original one. But in this, I really like this color, but yeah, it doesn't really go well with any of the systems as far as like, I mean, it, <sighs> anytime you have something hanging off of the back of your system, it's gonna kind of look out of place. But I, I have a feeling Terra Onion, they got like a good deal on this uh, translucent blue. Like the factory was like, dude, we got blue. <laughs> we'll cut you a freaking deal on it. Because like, why, why did they go with blue? I don't know. That's my serial number, don't steal it. It's already registered, so whatever. But there we go. We have our HDMI out, our micro USB, our in-game trigger button. I think if you just hit it, it resets the game. If you hold it, it will like reboot to the menu. Micro SD card slot right there. Let me grab my micro SD card, see how hard it is to get her in and get her out. Okay, here we go. I think I have a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Let's get her in there. Okay, it is spring loaded. I was just hoping like I didn't accidentally like put it up above and it's just gonna like wander in there, but no, it's in there. Uh, it is kind of like really recessed, so you gotta like stick your nail in there to get it out. There we go. Not not too bad, but still it's kind of, uh, you're gonna leave it in there anyway, unless you gotta do a firmware update. But it, it works, that's fine. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in uh, and test it out. Let me get this uh, firmware updated. Fits nicely on my core graphics. So there we go. Does look a little weird, that blue, but Kind of, it works, it works. I mean, they had to differentiate it from the uh, the previous model. So I guess they didn't want to use the same color. I, I don't freaking know, but there it is. Looking sweet. Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in, switch cameras and switch microphones. So it is gonna, you know, my voice may sound a little different, whatever, let's do it. Okay, so here we go. I did the firmware update. I downloaded it from the Terra Onion website. You do have to register your serial number on your system to download it. Put it on the root of your micro SD card and boot up your system and it'll prompt you if you wanna 
install the new firmware. So I've already done that and taken a look at a few things here. I'm really digging the style of the user interface. You can change that around. Now I don't have every single game installed at the moment, pretty much the entire library minus the Japanese CD-ROM set. I'll get those added later, but for this video, I figured this would be fine for now to test a few things out. But let's go ahead and check out the options real quick. Pressing select will bring up this option screen and we have a ton of things we can do here. The game list type, if you leave it the list, it'll just be, you know, words listing out all the games you have and the folders that you select to go through, or you can change it to cover view. Now there are some steps you have to do to get the cover view to work. We'll go through that in a moment. The other options we have here is boot the last game. If you enable that, every time you power on the system, it will boot to whatever the last game was you played as if you had the hue card or CD game inserted. You could hold the run button to go to the menu while you boot up if you have that enabled. I'm just leaving it off because I like to go through and select my game each time. Reverse menu one and two, it just reverses the way the buttons react in the menu. Uh, enable in-game trigger. That is if you want to exit back to the main menu, you would hold select and start for a few seconds and it'll bring you back here. Or you could just press that button on the back of the Super SD System 3 Pro, the Super HD System 3. If you press that button on the back, resets the game, holding it, takes you back to this menu here. Seek time emulation. Uh, if you enable this option, it will make this, you know, SSD S3 Pro simulate the time that the CD read header takes to move from part of the disc to another. So loading data may take a little longer, but it could fix some audio desync issues that you may have. So that's an option there. Per game backup RAM is one that if you leave it enabled, which I believe is the default, it'll have a file for the backup RAM for each individual game that you play saved to the micro SD card. If you disable it, it'll just be one file for everything. So do as you will. Enable the arcade card. So this is just for the, uh, the RAM arcade card emulation. It's enabled, you're gonna use it. If not, whatever. Enable Hue Card Dumper. If you enable this, this is pretty cool. If you wanna dump your own Hue Cards, have this enabled, power off the system, insert a Hue Card, and when you boot up the system, it'll load up the dumper and you can dump your Hue Card to the micro SD card. So then you have some volume options. Select the CD-ROM system card for you know the CD-based games. You could select which one you wanna use. And then what else do we have here? Alternate CD-ROM program. I look through the uh, manual. I don't see what this actually is, so I'm not sure at the moment. Video options, we have a few. You can change the video mode, 720 by 480 or 640 by 480, 1280 by 720, 720, 480 unbuffered, and that seems to be it. So moving on, you do have scan lines you can use and you know, it just kind of darkens the screen. I don't like scan lines, but you do have an option here for brightness and the uh, scaling mode, which I have it on sharp. The default was smooth. I hate that, so I don't have that on. But yeah, you got scan lines if you want to use that. I'm going to leave them off. Scaling mode, like I said, smooth or sharp. Uh, I like it sharp, man, but you could smooth it out if needed. Analog color table, if you're using analog video output, uh, you can load up different tables and then choose the brightness option here normal, reduced, same thing with digital, load up a different table, full, limited, and that is your option there. And then our UI theme, so I thought this was pretty cool. You could select through you know, different options as far as what system you're using to make it kind of match if you want. PC Engine Blue, Core Graphics 2, Core Graphics, which is the system I'm using, so I just left it to that, and then PC Engine. Really cool stuff. So. Let me show you real quick. If you wanna use the cover view, which I've already done this because I was trying to figure it out. It wasn't 100%, but if you wanna go ahead and get the cover view for each one, like, okay, PC Engine Hue card, as you see, I have the cover view for everything. Well, not everything. There might be some things that don't like grab the cover because their like data doesn't line up. So you can still see that the no cover thing happen. I've only seen a few of them, more so in the CD games, I think. But in order to do this, so we're gonna go ahead and select whatever folder. Like if you go to the options and you're like scan folder, you just click that. It's not gonna do anything unless you're actually in one of your folders. So let's go to PC Engine Hue card, go to options. Now we're in that folder already, so let's go ahead and scan it. If you do this, like if you went in there and it just said no cover for everything, I mean, because you haven't scanned the folder yet. 
So you would do this, it takes a few seconds, depending on how big the library is, and then your you know covers will show up. Now, if you did only that for PC Engine, then you go to Super Graphics, you'd probably have like you know no covers here, but I've already done this. So we selected Super Graphics, then we would have to go back to Scan Folder and select that, and it would quickly scan that folder because there are only a handful of games there. So you have to do that for each folder, unless you just have everything dumped in the one area type of thing. But there we go. This is my CD games, the uh, US games, and that's all I've loaded so far. Some of them I noticed, yeah, we don't have the uh, covers for. Not a big deal. A lot of times it'll be like weird homebrews and stuff like that. Uh, some, you know, whatever, bikini girls, I, I guess. Okay. Fantasy Star Soldiers not showing up. That's all right. We'll figure that out eventually. But yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and load something up here. Cotton? Why not? So there you go. I just wanted to showcase a little bit of what this thing can do, the different video options. It's cool that you could play Super Graphics, like an FPGA implementation of the Super Graphics on this device. I know they were talking about and heavily advertised the NES Core, where you can play NES games on this thing. I don't believe that is quite available yet, but as soon as it is, I'm definitely going to check it out. Wasn't the reason I bought this device. I bought it to have access to the full PC Engine library, Turbo Graphics library, and to have HDMI out without having to fiddle around with other adapters and whatnot and scalers. I think what I've seen so far with the way the video quality is, the sound, the audio, all that good stuff, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's a very cool product, not cheap by any means. I think when I purchased this initially, it was like around $300 ship, somewhere around there. Um, once it was shipped, I did get in on the pre-order, so once it was finally shipped, it just took a few days to get to me, so that was pretty cool. Definitely glad to have this device to be able to mess around with it right now. Link will be in the description if you want to check it out. Pretty expensive. We have tons of other options to do similar things in that we can play these games on emulation devices, on Mr. I know all that, but this is just another option for people who like original hardware so why the hell not right appreciate you guys watching thanks for hanging and i will catch you on the next one peace out bye bye and boom bye